and they're trouble free. Take them out, put them in properly, and reside the house. I would go to a pre-finished vertical siding and put in properly. Pre-finished? Pre huh? Pre-finished? Pre absolutely. What pre kind of mid what? Uh, cabin is a good one. Is it? What's no. it made out of? Well, it's made out of. It, it'll be made out of some of its composite. Okay. And others are made out of a, a pine. Some are made out of a cedar, that's been like kiln dried and pre finished. Okay. Cabot's a good one. Okay. Uh, Maybach has been around for a hundred years, and they still do a decent product. How would you? And the deck would probably need to be redone too, right? The connection between the deck and the house. If you wanted to go, well. There's a product you can look up on online. Okay. It's bloody expensive, but it'll end this problem forever. It's called IPA. IPE. It's a Brazilian hardwood. Oh, yeah. my sister's got that stuff. It. She still has maintenance. She had to have it Not finished. Not much. You, okay. you can leave it like it is, <coughs> and it's 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 got the density of teak, and you can do whatever you want. It's bloody expensive to buy, but it's the deck problem is over. Short of buying. <laughs> I don't know, patio stones or whatever. What about the connection between the cottage, that, that two by eight that runs against well, the wall? Well, if you were doing this again, I'd flash the whole back side of it and, and make sure you've got that lapped in. It goes up under the siding and down over the deck before you put all these boards back on. Even, but if we did vertical siding then? If you did vertical so siding, same thing. It just comes down, sits on it. Because the grooves in the siding or we'll bring the water down and then you'll exhaust it in the flashing over the top of the stringer. Do you have any idea what it would cost to redo this place with siding and windows, etc.? Do you guys, would you guys work out this far? My guys? Yeah. No. You're, I'm way out of my reach. Okay. Um, you better. There's got to be local guys that you know, Phil, that can oh, yeah. do that. Myself, I'm getting up to an age, too. You're getting up in age? Yeah. Do you have any backup guys? <laughs> no. No, I've downsized quite a bit. I, I tried to help over here as much that as would, I can. <coughs> it would, uh, yeah, it, it would, it would be crippling. My, like for me to come out this way. Okay. I mean, I'm six and a half hours one way. You're gonna have to the guys that have to stay there? here. I live uh, I live in a little place called Guilford on the Lake Simcoe at the bottom of Lake Simcoe. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I travel all over the province and and so on. I've done jobs in Dolmore and stuff like that. But when you get going over the top of the lake, we'd have to find a place to stay here. Yeah. And this would definitely be a a June job. You know, like a June or July situation to tie up the cottage. That's that's a major undertaking. Oh yeah. Uh, if you do, you have the drawings on PDF. We do. If you PDF me the file, okay. in the email, I could do a takeoff for you. I don't mind doing that. What's the takeoff? Takeoff. Measure all the the, the square footage. Okay. I have no idea. <coughs> anyway, let me show you a couple other trouble spots yeah. here. And one of them is this corner here, which is got a lot of, it looks to me like there's definitely some stuff going on down in here. The discoloration, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm positive it's That's gotten exactly behind what there. I'm talking about. Yeah. The deck isn't flashed. So the deck was never flashed, so that's what you've got. The water's coming behind there, and it's getting into the wall. Why don't they have that in the plans then? You know, one of the things I did ask the Lindell folks, are, they said, I asked who did the plans, they said a draftsman. I was like, well, was there an architect oversight or engineer or anything? Well, and there was not really much of an answer for that. The way it's gone now, like what John is faced with now selling Lindells, like number one, for years, when this was built, we didn't have anything at the building department. You came in with your drawings. If it was stamped by Lindell, it was gospel. Mm -hmm. So away you went and put up the house. Now he gets it from Lindell. He has to take it to an Ontario engineer and certify that. And then they have to take the Ontario building code and apply it to this. Okay. And so that's where you get in way back when. That's when you got into this problem where it went on against the, the, the right against. Basically, you put in the breather. Big deal. It doesn't breathe. But, but for this to be proper, 
it should be at least three quarters of an inch out from the wall. Right. So when the, the rain hammers the shit out of it, it dries. Yeah. This is not drying. It's not, I know. You, you can caulk this till Moses rebuilds the ark and you're never going to get 100% waterproof. I know. And then the, well, the, just condensation, is, the water right? gets behind there in a situation like that, this never dries. But well, when you strap the wall, this should be the airspace at the bottom. So this water comes right out, finished, done. And with the, with the uh, well, the house slicker, or I prefer strapping it. Okay. Because then you're guaranteed, right? So it's even better than house guaranteed slicker. Guaranteed that you've got your airspace, your proper airspace in it. Is there any way it could be rebuilt with strapping with the siding we have, do you think? I can tell you right now, you're not going to pull that away from the wall and it be usable. I doubt it. I don't know what you think. Three and a half inch finishing nails, galvanized finishing nail. What, bring it out? Taking it off? No, that's what's in, that's what's in the tongue. You're never going to get that off without splitting that's the shit out of it. That's recommended to use those nails. Well, that's two inch, two inch. And then you're going on an angle, that's why we use three and a half inch galvanized. Well, I, there's a I product see. you see now, like that same stuff I was talking to Phil about on the underside of those, the blue stuff. Oh, blue, did you call it blue it's, skin? It's, it's called blue stuff. And blue. and it can go on to the plywood and then your home slicker and then this, if you want it. The home slicker is a good product. It works well. And per square foot, it's probably the same price as the flashing. It's a strapping, you know. But yeah. to get that off and redo it, long well, shot. I, and I did. I took. I, you did? It does come off. Like you got to cut it with a recip saw. One thing I got to ask you. Uh, shit, I lost my train of thought on that one because it was an important question I wanted to ask you. Leave it with me for a couple of seconds. Okay, we'll come back. Well, that's that's a classic, the classic case of the of the flashing not being in there. And my dad said. And then you said these were mitered. Is that correct? The Phil, these Behind these are mitered. These these were mitered, yeah, right? Originally, yeah. He so, wanted my dad wanted it to just be like again a piece of furniture, was, and it uh, was. He wanted the finished product out here. Anyway, so with that not being caulked, that's holding moisture too, right? Yeah, I know, but then you caulk it, then it seals it up, then it can't breathe, so, right? Don't forget, I stained both sides, too, on this. This is uh, two coats on the, two coats on the back yeah. side, and I don't know how many I got on the front side now. So my dad said these windows on the lower floor all leak. On the upper floor that we were just on, uh, the lower windows leak. Not the high prow ones, but the first ones. Um, See what's happening? You've got the you've got spikes in there, right? And so with no flashing there behind the siding and on the top of the of the uh, kicker, mm -hmm. then 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 the water's free to travel wherever it wants. It's going through the nail holes and it'll just come out in here. Yeah. Now you got this one here. That's put back in. But I'm not sure that you didn't caulk the top of that, eh, Phil? Uh, the top of the. That I got that flashing above there. Yeah. Okay. It's flashing all the way around there with It looks like it does have caulk. You got that flashed up there. It's all flashed. I think your water is. You know, I don't know. Oh, on the deck, yeah, the deck is all flashed. Now was that done recently? No, no. No. You did no, that before, that. and you still got water coming down. Um, uh, some, of, most of it was uh, all prior to that. I think. Now that's been up there for a long time. I didn't do the, deck flash, the deck flashing. And all of these leak, or up there, upstairs, all of them leak? The, okay, so this level leaks, <clears throat> the next set of windows leaks, but not the high ones on the press. So, <clears throat> not the high ones. Yeah, so the ones right up against the roof there, the roof line, those don't leak, but the ones <clears throat> right above the deck do leak. And then see that corner uh, right there where the, it turns and goes down the, uh, I guess the south side. 
that gets water, and I'm I'm pretty sure it's getting back beyond oh, the fascia board. The there, yeah. yeah. And then these stair rails <clears throat> are rotting like crazy because they're sitting right on the ground. Phil actually replaced this one this summer and what he did was use that laminated beam he recovered from the porch that fell yeah. away to replace this but you can see when these things sit on deck they just rot like crazy and i've got the old section that he he uh that he replaced this well the snow is gonna yeah go to work on that right and even with the shoe on it you know one crack in the caulking and water gets down in there it is just such a terrible design to put this cedar right against the, the ground. It's crazy. You can already see this is some the color discoloring in here. That's not cedar, it's fur. Well fur then. Those beams are fur. Okay. But. And then he's had to caulk in here because water was getting up yeah. and starting to rot in there, you know, along the base. Um, it's a wood house, man. That's I know, but that's just, you know, structural suicide. <laughs> well, you take them out and put steel in, and it'll still rust. You know, I don't know, Mike. I... You nice that wall from behind you there? Yeah. It's, like, it's 25 years old, almost. Yeah, but it doesn't get any sun. It doesn't get anything. It doesn't get anything against it. It does get wet. It does I've got a wet. video of it Mike now. Mike pointed that well, out does it get me. wet from yeah. the deck? Yes, yeah, it drips right through. Me, uh, yeah, the whole thing gets yeah, but wet. It gets no sun. It doesn't and, get sun. And it likely dries. Yeah. And there you go. And then up at the top of the deck here, I'll show you the end of this. It doesn't get any sun. No, for sure. Yeah, see like right here how this is rotting away? Yep. We've had a lot of that along the deck. And the, and the uh, sea tall just doesn't protect it. It fractures on the ends and you know water starts getting in there and that's that. Which is why we ended up on those beams that are exposed along the roof line just doing uh, the West System epoxy. Because I think that'll protect them a lot better. It just doesn't. It just seems crazy, though, the amount of maintenance that's required just to keep it from falling apart. You know. Hello.